there are some children who need to be identified and helped as potential serious risks to themselves and others. Does a student have access to weapons? Do they abuse animals? Do they have a mental health diagnosis? Starting this school year, these are the types of questions a new state law requires Texas districts to ask if a student makes a threat. We first told you about it today on KXAN News at 5 and 6. Now KXAN education reporter Tom Miller has traveled north to Weatherford, a district near Dallas that's been a model for other districts' safety assessments. With wind whipping, rain pouring, and lightning strikes overhead, our arrival in Weatherford wasn't exactly a picnic, but the unpredictable elements helped us quickly learn something. As you can see, there's a lot of bad weather coming in. There's a lot of lightning strikes. This North Texas school district says it's prepared. Lightning uh, strikes kills more people than tornadoes do. So we're making sure that they are notified. It could impact their dismissal. This is Weatherford ISD's Security Operations Center, where the weather is taken as seriously as school surveillance. We could go live and see is there a suspicious person? Is there someone making demands? What is the situation? After a major bond passed in 2015, Safety and Security Executive Director Bruno Diaz says the district made significant security upgrades. Every classroom is equipped with uh, a call button. However, the biggest changes aren't the physical ones. After 15 years working in law enforcement, Diaz is one of the first to bring the threat assessment screening model to a school campus in Texas. We have a, uh, a screening process with uh, questions. Key questions have been identified by the Secret Service, by the FBI, in, in, in assessing threats. Um, and uh, we, we see how they answer uh, those questions. We're looking at social factors, we're looking at other influences, uh, peer pressure, different things that could be going on in their lives. Specifically, any threat with the intention of causing bodily injury. Students are deemed either level one, less severe, or level two, a heightened risk for carrying out a threat. From last December through May, the district conducted threat assessments on 71 of its 8,000 students. During that interview, do you dislike this teacher? Why? And if, if they start to provide reasons and in that process, you ask, do you really feel about hurting? Do you understand the, Do you understand what hurting someone truly means? Sometimes students do, which is when the red flags start going up and the screening process becomes more elaborate, requiring Diaz to fill out an 18-page assessment with questions like, how easily can this student access weapons? Is there a scheduled attack? What is their social status among peers? Do they have a mental health diagnosis? And what kind of family life do they have? And based on the information we have, we develop a uh, management strategy that may involve safety plans to make sure that everyone is safe and also counseling plans. And we assess how well we're doing. Diaz points to early data showing the threat assessment model is working. Of the 71 students flagged, 70% of the potential threats were de-escalated, 23% stayed as the lower level tier one incidents, while 7% escalated to tier two. Yeah, every camera is connected. If this all sounds like a novel experiment, it'll soon be a reality where you live too. Starting this year, every school district in the state is required to have a similar student threat assessment model. What do you think about this student threat assessment? I, I think it's an important component of keeping our students safe. Chief Ashley Gonzalez says having this kind of information on high-risk students could be the difference between de-escalating a potential threat and getting caught off guard. Some of those times, you know, those issues can escalate into self-harm or violence against others, and that's what we're trying to prevent. Part of the benefit? When a student switches schools, there won't be any guessing or reading between the lines when it comes to past disciplinary issues. Instead, a completed threat assessment will be available for administrators to look through. We want to make sure that if a student has been identified that, that they continue to receive services. Uh, and just because they're moving to another campus, or another school, uh, or promoting to, to a different grade, uh, that doesn't mean the services stop and that information is not shared. Weatherford also passes along the threat assessment to other school districts if a student transfers, so long as the new district requests it. Like the threat assessment itself, Diaz hopes this type of sharing can serve as a model for how Texas schools interact with each other when it comes to safety and security.
If I'm a counselor and, I'm, and I've developed an effective strategy with this child, I want to make sure that the strategies that I'm employing are going to be handed off to the next counselor so that we can keep that child on that successful pathway. Diaz says with so many assessments, case management is a problem. The district is looking at acquiring a database to track the progress. Tom, I can imagine there are also privacy concerns. There are those concerns. Both FERPA and HIPAA apply to this kind of information, but both of them have safety exemptions. And as we mentioned, every district in the state is going to implement the same thing this school year. Yeah, they are, and it'll be up to the Texas School Safety Center at Texas State University to audit districts and determine which are noncompliant. All right, Tom, thank you. Our Save Our Students coverage continues all week on air and online. Online Now, explore our digital project, Save Our Students, Solutions for Wellness and Safety. See why we're taking a closer look at this important topic. Stories from across the nation, in-depth conversations with school workers on the front line, interactive analysis of what's happening with mental health and your children, plus community outreach and resources to get help for your family. It's all online now at SaveOurStudentsTX.com.